Hey everyone, it's Matthew, back with another episode of Waddy's channel. And yes, it is a two video day. Well, I should call it a multiple video day because, you know, who's a good, there's a good chance I come back and do another video, two videos, 20 videos, who knows. Um, I always get a kick out of doing these videos, so, you know, hey, I, I might stop at one, but pff, at least the intention might be to stop at one video, but I end up doing several in a day and, you know, that way I try and send, uh, post as many of these videos as I can. So, uh, the last video was simply a thank you to uh, one of my favorite customizers and I really got to stop calling them that because they're not customizers. They're just another toy store in my opinion, toy manufacturer, and they probably do the best job of any uh, toy manufacturer, you know, throughout, a, throughout history, you know, take, you take your pick. Uh, Remco's, I used to always brag on those guys, but I mean, I'm starting to come around now. Maybe it's just because I'm older and, and now I'm, I'm getting just more enjoyment from just, you know, reverting back to some of the nostalgic uh, times in my life. But uh, today's video is going to be uh, the much anticipated. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> I know everybody's back home laughing their butts off at that one. <laughs> well, it's anticipated for me. I, I, I was really dying to do this video. So, <laughs> uh, so this video is going to be about the Hasbro Tag Teams. Now this is my interpretation or my favorite uh, tag team wrestlers. Now some of these are actual, you know, Hasbro release tag teams. Some of them are just, you know, uh, the tag teams that, you know, I, I put together because they did team up together, um, you know, obviously, uh, in real life. So I am including them as part of uh, this competition. Well, not really competition. Uh, my, you know, least favorite to favorite. And uh, without further ado, let's get started. So the first tag team, uh, this comes in at number 17, which I'm not happy about because I love the Rockers. I actually think they were, you know, not only one of the more fun and entertaining tag teams or wrestlers for that matter, but, you know, they're like, but it's just the fact that their figures are so terrible. And, you know, you heard me say this and I'll, I'll repeat it again. I'll probably keep repeating it. When it comes to Hasbro figures, you know, I love them all. Uh, now, there are obviously those like the Rockers, which, you know, give me fits because, you know, the, because of the fused legs, you know, they're always falling over. Really frustrating, very annoying. And, of course, the design of the figures themselves aren't that great, you know, from color to, uh, well, the pose for Marginetti is, uh, isn't bad. Uh, I like the, uh, the Shawn Michaels figure myself, but... But again, uh, they are possibly one of the worst figures, aesthetically at least, and you know playability-wise, again, they're adequate. You know, um, having these, you know, they have you know additional meaning to me uh, as a kid. But even though I absolutely love the Rockers, they are meeting coming in at the very bottom of my favorite tag teams, for the simple fact that you know aesthetically they're not the best-looking figures, and the fused legs does not do any justice whatsoever. So, Rockers, number 17. Coming at number 16, again, we, we kind of saw this one coming, Bushwhackers. I only grabbed Series 2. I didn't pull Series 10 off the shelf. Uh, so, again, aesthetically, these are actually two of the better figures. And uh, But the problem is the fact that they can't stand on their own without knocking something over you know, or having to lean against something. That's really the only reason they make my list ever for, you know, being terrible figures. I did not have these as a kid. And when I actually look at, you know, my shelf and I see, or my display case, and I look at all these figures, I think we, my brothers and I, had almost all of Series 1 and 2. I mean, there are obviously a few standouts. We never had the Rockers. We never had Demolition. We never had Andre the Giant, for example. I don't remember having Macho Man Series 1 either, but uh, you know what? I don't think we had uh, Series 2. But overall, you know, good-looking figures. They can't stand, which makes them terrible, you know, as far as uh, display purposes. So for no other reason, that's why they meet my list of the second-to-last worst tag teams, Bushwhackers. Number 15, I could separate them, you know, one tag team here, two tag teams there, but I'm not going to do that. So for uh, for this 
instance here, I will keep them all as one team. And it is Demolition. So in Series 1, if I'm not mistaken, uh, they introduced both X and Smash of the Demolition. Actually, some of my more illustrious figures. Uh, I absolutely love the design of uh, these figures. And of course, Crush came out in a Series 2. And this is an absolutely beautiful figure. You know, this is actually my favorite so if any of the folks at Random Treasures are watching this video by chance, if you want to create a crush demolition figure, I am absolutely would be on board for that. And this is just a beautiful pit. And it's kind of odd just looking at this figure because he and Shawn Michaels both kind of do like that, that backwards fist thing. Kind of like, a, you know, Bob Orton from the, from the LJN line. And, you know, that creates a terrible pose, but... You know, on, on these figures, it works a little bit better, obviously, because Bob Borden's hand is, you know, obviously way up there. You know, at least these hands you can maneuver. So if you want to fight, body slam something, you can do that. It sucks because, like I said, I mean, these are three of the better figures that Hasbro made, and I love them. And, you know, they stand up relatively well. They do fall over like crazy, but that's because I've, who I've got, you know, on the side of them or in, in behind them, always knocking them over. But and the fact that I got, I finally acquired these uh, a couple months ago. Uh, that's such incredible to have these helmets as part of their accessories. So, and and think about it this way: if Demolition, it meets my list of the third worst tag teams. That Hasbro came out, and again, I'm not including just the original tag teams. I'm including, you know, a lot of the different uh, tag teams that came out uh, in real life as well as part of this competition. So, you know, it just shows you how deep this, how deep Hasbro is as far as quality. When Demolition comes off as one of the worst teams or one of the worst figures, and uh, coming in at number fourteen. And I shot, I honestly, I think I should have moved this up some, but number 14, again, Hasbro related. They were not tag teams during this point, not when El Matador and the model, but in the 80s, Tito Santana and Rick Martel, Strike Force. Uh, their Strike Force figures were probably one of the more difficult LJNs for me to, to, get, a, to get a hold of. They always seem to sell for, you know, $100, $150, and I love the figures. I definitely wanted them, but really, were they that valuable in my eyes? And I didn't see that the value there, so it took me a little bit longer to acquire them. So uh, these are, you know, two good fold, uh, really good figures. I, I love the Rick Martel model figure, and again, because of his arm punching motion, it does kind of take away from Tito Santana a little bit, but again, is it the worst thing ever? Of course not, and and it's a beautiful figure overall. So Tito Santana and Rick Martel, I'm gonna call them Strike Force for the sake of this video. Strike Force comes in at number fourteen. All right, so number thirteen again, another made up per se uh the twin towers now this big boss man actually is a custom so I've been showing, you know the regular series one boss man i've been showing the series three boss man but i don't think i've ever pulled out this custom figure and uh when i first bought this he was part of a lot that i purchased i don't know how big the lot was seven figures ten figures i don't remember but um when i saw this i thought this was actually uh, another figure that you know i never had now, obviously, as I started acquiring more and more figures, you know, I, and started finding a checklist to go off of, I realized that this was not on any checklist. And uh, I think the Black Million Dollar Man, or excuse me, uh, the Black uh, Big Boss Man uh, was probably from WCW or something. But, I mean, <laughs> one solid color, and it's beautiful. I absolutely love it. Do I love it more than the Bloom Black? 
maybe because I like the, the you know, the digit color really stands out, but I um, mean, it's a great figure the way. And I wanted to show him off, so I brought him out for the Twin Towers with Big Boss Man and Akeem, aka One Man Gang. I kind of remember Akeem, but not really. Like, I, I remember the figure, obviously. I don't know if I had him as a kid, but... Like, I think I remember him like Royal Rumbles. I, I don't can't recall him ever wrestling individually. Again, we're talking, you know, 30-plus years ago. So, I mean, my memory isn't all that great. So, for me to think that far back, I don't want to say impossible, but... Number 13 is the Twin Towers. So number 12 is actually two of my more favorite figures. And this is going to be the Mega Powers. So we've got Macho Man from Series 1. And we've got Hulk Hogan. Now I could have used any of the Hogans, any of the Macho Mans for the sake of this video. But I just chose the two that were probably my favorite even though the Hogan series one with the you know the arm press was probably the one I'm most familiar with, uh, I chose this one. I I keep buying this guy like crazy. I don't know why. I guess you know sometimes I figure like because I know the value of this figure, and sometimes if I get him for uh, you know on the lower cost, you know I figure you know it's a great buy. Why not you know have him? If I ever need to sell him off in the future, you know at least I'll have at least one for my personal collection. So. And again, it's a beautiful figure. I, th I think this one in here is mint, and they should both be mint or close to mint. But Mega Powers uh, does come in at number 12. And two really amazing figures, and neither one of these top were on my top 10 list. And that bothered me, because how do you not have a Hulk Hogan, for example, on your, your list of 10 greatest figures? <laughs> uh, Mega Powers, number 12. Number 11, I'm going to break this up into two different teams. So, first one is... The Dream Team. <laughs> so, Dream Team, as we know, uh, back in the 80s, you had uh, Greg the Hammer Valentine, and you had, of course, uh, Brutus Beefcake. Now, Hasbro, obviously, in the 90s, Dream Team was disbanded. These guys didn't really exist. So um, I am putting them together for the sake of this video as uh, my favorite tag team. And again, let me, let me rephrase that. Not necessarily my favorite, uh, my favorite tag team, but my favorite figures to make up a tag team. So, I mean, if, if, if that were the case, you know, Demolition would probably be in like the top five if I was going off favorite tag teams. But uh, favorite figure design... That could be included as a tag team, either, you know, again, real life or you're talking actual Hasbro release. Um, so number 11 is going to be the Dream Team. But Valentine is not alone. Uh, he is not a one and done figure because coming in at number 10 is Rhythm and Blues. So apparently uh, there was a, I don't know if it was just a, a model that they created of a dark-haired Greg Valentine and that Hasbro was supposed to, you know, actually include him as a tag team with the Hunky Tonk Man. But uh, from what I heard recently, a little video I watched, I guess somebody had like over $40,000 for a Greg Valentine dark hair. And I, I don't care if I was worth billions of dollars. Well, maybe if that were the case, possibly, but uh, I don't care how much money I made in life. Forty grand for a four-inch piece of plastic, it just does not make sense. As much as I love these figures, I mean, there are certain extents I will not go, and I will not pay $40,000, $43,000 for, for something that costs 40 bucks, you know, 20 if you're lucky. But again, uh... Rhythm and Blues will come in at number 10, and it is simply based off of the figures themselves. Not necessarily my favorite uh, tag team, per se. Rhythm and Blues, number 10. So this one I should call 9A and 9B, but 
I don't know, maybe it's like a nine with asterisk type of deal. But I would break it down to two, two teams here. But again, they're, they're the same thing. So uh, coming in at number nine, I'm putting Money Inc. Absolutely love the green suited Million Dollar Man. And I talked about in previous videos how the championship belt on this particular figure, the clasp did break. So you can't actually close this one up, which sucks. So I do have the belt, original belt for both the Series 9 uh, No Suit Million Dollar Man. And the I finally got it right. I kept calling it Series 8, and then I kept calling it Series 10. But it is indeed a Series 9 Million Dollar Man. I'm trying to find somewhere to put this tape. <laughs> and, of course, the... Uh, in my opinion, Series 2 Million Dollar Man is my favorite figure. My favorite Million Dollar Man figure. Uh, just a beautiful likeness. And absolutely love these two together. It, they just made a really great you know, tandem, I think. So, I'm going to put it on here. Money Inc. with IRS. And number 8 is going to be Money Inc with Virgil. Now Virgil as the you know body car a bodyguard of Million Dollar Man, I don't know necessarily if you could this classify him as part of Money Inc. per se. You know, later on when you know Million Dollar Man uh, got injured and he could no longer wrestle and he became a manager himself. You know, there are a whole slew of characters I could have basically put in this competition or, or in, in this uh, video that would fall under the whole money ink uh, incorp you know, incorporation, but for for Hasbro related, Virgil IRS Million Dollar Man, Virgil and Million Dollar Man come in at number eight. So number seven, these figures are actually the ones. Now they didn't come in a package together, but they should. But they do uh, come in together, per se, um, as far as being tag teams. And, of course, the design of the figures, you know, implies that as well. So this is another dual set. Uh, number seven, we're going to start off with the new foundation. And these are two absolutely beautiful figures. Absolutely incredible. And just... It seems like I keep buying Jim Neidhart like crazy. And again, it's because I keep seeing the value there. And if I see him selling, it's like five bucks. And there's like two days left in, in auction. You know, I, I might bid on him. And I might end up winning him for like $15, $20. I think when I first acquired this figure, I paid somewhere around 40 45 bucks. But I've probably <laughs> purchased like a dozen of them since. And I know I might pay somewhere between $15, $25 for him. And what I do is, you know, I, you know, tag team them with, you know, uh, Bret Hart or I'll tag team them with Owen Hart and, and I'll put that in one listing, you know, and I'll create another listing for another tag team. So, um, so I do actually try to sell these, uh, I haven't had much luck obviously, but you know, two absolutely beautiful figures and, uh, the new Hart foundation comes in at number seven on my list. And if we're talking New Heart Foundation at six, that can only mean one thing. The original Heart Foundation at number seven. Oh, number six. So Heart Found New Heart Foundation number seven, New Heart uh, Heart Foundation at number six. So again, I decided to go with Bret Hart from series eight. Now, this is one of the more you know perfect Hasbro figures of all time. Series 4 was a great Bret Hart, absolutely. But, you know, the Series 4 Bret Hart cannot match the design <laughs> of this figure. Now, Bret Hart, I think uh, I think this one was number number 3, I think. Maybe number 4. I want to say number 3. When I did my favorite uh, Hasbro figures, I think he came up at number 3 on my list. So, the fact that he and... Uh, Again, another absolutely perfect figure uh, would top out at number six. Just again, I said it before, you just imagine how deep 
you know Hasbro goes, and uh, that will close out the Heart Foundation. So, coming in at number five, maybe probably deserve to be uh, further down my list than where I have them, but either way, they're two phenomenal pieces. I love them to death. Number five is the Head Shrinkers. Now, I can never remember who's who. I want to say Samu is the one with the tongue out and Fatu, you know, without the tongue out. So, yeah, I believe Samu has the tongue out because I think this is the one that I have uh, also on card. And I was very lucky. I was able to purchase four different uh, Hasbros on card. And I paid like 40 bucks for three of them and then $47 on the fourth one. So... To get any any of these guys on card for less than a hundred dollars is is just phenomenal, and uh, and that's why when I see figures like you know Beefcake Series One selling for you know hundred hundred twenty five dollars on card, and maybe the card has creases in it, it's just like wait why? Because he's come he comes with the you know some scissors. No. Two beautiful figures, and again I mentioned this before. Uh, what I love about these guys. Even though they're heavier than figures like um, the Rockers, for example, you know, with the with the fuse legs, Rockers can't stand up. Uh, they they fall over like crazy. These guys, I don't think I've ever had any problems with these guys, you know, falling over. Even though they're top heavy, you know, they seem to stand, you know, well enough. And the design of these figures is absolutely remarkable. Try and give a full 360. Of Samu and Fatu, the Head Shrinkers. So, Head Shrinkers, number five. All right, guys, number four. Number four, the Natural Disasters. So I kind of run into the same issues with these guys uh, as far as, you know, standability. Now, you can push their legs out, spread them apart enough to where they kind of balance themselves. So I really don't have too much of an issue with them standing on their own. But again, with legs back you know, or straight out, you know, these guys will never stand on their own. Maybe you'll get a few seconds out of it. But overall, like I said... You know, you, you got to spread the legs out in order to, to kind of balance it out back and front. Uh, but other than that, I mean, take that out of consideration. The figures themselves are absolutely perfect and absolutely love these. I think it has similar body types to uh, Kamala. I don't see much difference there as far as, you know, uh, the chest and stomach area. Obviously, Kamala's legs are fused, so that's these are completely different as well. But, uh, you know, they do obviously mirror each other as far as uh, overall size, you know, leg design. Well, actually, no, I think Typhoon, his legs and belly might actually be a little bit thinner. But, Natural Disasters, we'll do a 360 view. Not all my figures are mint condition, but, I mean, most of them are, you know, about as close as, you know, can be expected. Natural Disasters, if you want to get these guys together on eBay, you know, they usually hover around $40, $45. Um, again, you might get lucky, you know, and bid on a site or a seller that's not very well known and uh, doesn't have a high traffic and might sell these guys for 20 bucks. But uh, either way, you know, even paying up to $40 for them, they're, they're, they're great figures, and I, I love them to death. So on this list, Natural Disasters, number four. All right. So number three. Number three comes out to be the Steiner Brothers. Now, obviously, original tag team. I want to. I wanted to call them original tag team, but that's not true. Uh, when they actually sold, they actually sold on different cards, so they they sold as individuals. But, I mean, you, you can let, call them a legitimate tag team either way. Now, 
both the Stein brothers are, are perfect figures, but of course, you know, in my opinion, uh, Rick Steiner is the much better figure, especially with the design of his outfit. And as much as I love this figure, he could have easily been on anyone's top 10 list. He's that good. And I just struggled, and I could not find in good conscience put him on my top 10 because there's so many amazing figures that I did choose and it was a killer to leave him off any type of list among the best because he this isn't just a good figure this isn't a great figure this is one of the elite figures and definitely one that sells for a very hefty price and when I say hefty I'm talking you know 80 90 dollars for just Rick Steiner again you might luck out here and there but overall uh, you're gonna have to pay up for this guy so uh, Scott Steiner again another great figure uh, his the way that his arms are situated it's not my favorite pose at all um, is it worse than you know the arm punching motion for example uh, I, don't know. I might actually take the arm punching motion over this you know, it, it's decent. Again, it's not it's not perfect. I mean, it's not the Ric Flair, you know, pose. One, two, three, kid, Rick Rude pose. And and let's be honest, no pose is going to be worse than that. But, you know, I, I don't know of any other figure that actually has this pose. Not off the top of my head, at least. So this could be an original, an original mold. Steiner Brothers, two great pieces. Awesome. Number two. Excuse me, number three. Number two. Again, when we were talking about my my favorite figures, uh, these last two tag teams, any one of the four figures could have been on my top ten. Heck, all four of them could have been on my top ten. They're that fantastic. And the fact that I didn't choose a single one, again, they're just... And this this line is just so steep in, in phenomenal figures. Number two is going to be the Nasty Boys. So, I guess playability-wise, if you're looking at it, Jerry Sags has the better pose, you know, fighting-wise. I'm not a huge fan of the arm out like this. Now, as far as being able to throw punches, opening up your arm, throw a clothesline, you know, that... You would think that would be an an amazing pose, and and it's so it's good, it's I would say it's above good, uh, just not quite great. And the reason I say that is because these poses are so difficult for um, for shipping wise, because they're just like but they the wrap, they just get damaged so badly. All right, so uh, nasty boys number two, and of course it only leaves one team to go the best of the best the legion of doom two fantastic figures absolutely love them and i gotta do a, a better inspection of these because sometimes when you do receive them they, they do have broken spikes i don't see any broken spikes on these oh yep there's one right there that's a shame but you know, he <laughs> they gave Hawk fused legs. I don't know why. Um, but either way, you know, you got two different fighting poses, two different stances. So, I mean, it, maybe it's nice that, you know, they gave some kind of separation so that you don't have two identical figures. And, of course, the paint job of Animal. I, I was going to say that Animal always has the better figure. You know, simply because the paint job is always amazing. You know, we look at random treasures, you know, LJN exclusives of, uh, you know, Hobby Animal. And then you look at the uh, you know, the Hasbro Le uh, Legion of Doom as well. And, you know, you see any of these different Jax versions, you know, where they're wearing red, they're wearing blue, they're wearing black. And Animal, he's always got the better paint job, so he always makes the better figure over Hawk. But... I was recently looking over at my uh, my Rumpkos, and I don't know. I'm, I'm starting to feel differently now. I, I was feeling like like Hawk was the better figure, to, uh, you know, based on you know, the colors, but now I'm thinking that because his paint is kind of faded, so maybe that's why. 
But yeah, that, that that's gotta be because I mean I don't think any of my Runko uh, and I, I've got two or three different versions of both the Legion of Doom, World Warriors for for uh, for Remco. But in that particular case, I think I, I would choose Hawk for Remco uh, over Animal. But that's about it. I mean that's about that. that I would never choose Hawk based on face paint over Animal. Um, that's too good and these are just two absolutely phenomenal figures uh like i said it how do you not have the legion of doom at least one on your top 10 uh all-time greats but that is my list of my favorite tag teams and uh and i'm sure it's possible i may have missed it you know you know um i don't want to say make believe like you know someone i threw in like honky tonk man i threw in greg valentine you know rhythm and blues type of uh, characters i'm sure i've missed one or two here and there but uh if you guys did notice any characters that hasbro made that could have been tag teams let me know and uh i could always do a follow-up uh, i always got to get a kick out of uh, talking to you guys and of course these videos you know always bring me great pleasure so <laughs> uh trust me i'm not afraid to keep going if uh if we got something else to do all right, guys, so I'm, I'm uh, not too eager to stop making videos tonight, so I might try and do another video or two. First, I got to kind of look through and, and decide, you know, what would be a good video with some good ideas. And um, I really don't want to do the whole, this is all the Series 1 figures, these are all the Series 10 figures, etc. Because I, I kind of feel like those have been done to death. Will I do it at some point? It's possible, especially if a lot of people start asking me to do it. But uh, right now, I, I'm... As far as like you know the tournaments or, or my favorite list, I mean these are you know they're uh, they're a lot faster, a lot easier, and of course you know hey I did th almost thirty videos for LJN competition, so uh, I'm not afraid to you know spend some time and you know talk about some characters or talk about the figures, but yeah, I get a kick out of this. So all right, guys, let me know. Uh, definitely leave a remark and let me know what you think, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Goodbye for now.